Yeah, I know it's been a while since I last made a video, but since I had problems with college, I had to take a break from YouTube to focus on that. Luckily, I managed to have some time off to make a video for you guys. So on today's episode, I decided to go back to Road Rovers to try and understand why the show was cancelled one year after it was released in 1996. Now for those who don't know, I had covered the show in the past, but I prefer not to talk about that video. So I've decided that I'm going to explain the real mystery behind why Road Rovers was cancelled since no one else can really explain it. So what is Road Rovers? Road Rovers was a show released in 1996 by Warner Brothers Animation and only aired from 1996 to 1997. The show itself was created by Tom Ruger and Jeff Gordon as well as the same animation team who created the Animaniacs also worked on the show. Okay, so about the plot of the show. Oh, and if you haven't watched the show for yourself, consider this a spoil warning. A man by the name of Professor William F. Shepard was a scientist who created the Trans Dogma Fire, a machine that could turn dogs into humanoid beings with superpowers. They were known as Kano Sapiens or Anthropomorphic Dogs for that matter. This of course catched the attention of the main villain of the show by the name of General Parvo. Parvo wants to use the Trans Dogma Fire to make an army of Kano Sapiens to rule the world because, well, he's a supervillain. It's unclear why he wants to take over the world, so it's probably just a supervillain cliche. In order to get the plans to the Trans Dogma Fire, Parvo kidnaps Shepard's dog Scout in order to force Shepard to hand over the technology. Shepard, having no choice, decides to hand over the plans in order to save his dog, but Parvo double crosses Shepard and instead plants a bomb in the dog cage, which of course blows up Shepard's workplace. Shepard survives the explosion, and with his newly recruited dogs from all parts of the world, he forms the Road Rovers. The Road Rovers is a canine superhero squad that consists of six canines, possessing a superpower due to the Trans Dogma Fire. The members on the team include Hunter, a Golden Retriever mixed breed from the USA, who is the leader of the Road Rover team. The story behind Hunter is that he was a stray living at the dog pound that was scheduled to be gassed along with his pal Muzzle until he was called by Shepard and managed to escape the dog pound with muzzle and toe. Yeah, very dark origin story. Hunter's superpower is super speed in which every time he runs he leaves a fire trail behind. So basically he's like the canine Flash. Hunter is a happy-go-lucky type character who tends to get way too cocky at times but he means well and he does a good job of being a leader. When he's in his normal dog form, Shepard assigned Hunter to live in the White House with President Bill Clinton. Next up, Colleen, the only female on the team. She's a rough-coated collie who lives on the streets of London until Shepard called her to serve on the team. Colleen doesn't really have what I call a superpower, but she is good at martial arts so I guess that counts as a superpower? Either way, Colleen is the type of person who likes to see the mission go smoothly and safely. She now lives with Prime Minister John Major and his wife in the UK. Next you got Blitz, a Doberman from Germany. Blitz was a junkier guard dog who now lives with the Chandler of Germany, Helmut Kohl. Blitz personality happens to be selfish, arrogant, and pretty much a coward, which can be seen in almost every episode. I'm not sure if this is a German stereotype, but I'm not going to make any German viewers mad, so I'm not going to address it. Blitz's superpower is that he has strong claws and strong jaws, because Doberman have a nasty bite and they can be dangerous when not trained right. Also his voice sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course, you know me, I'm Blitz. I don't really know why Warner Brothers animation team decided to go with this sort of voice, but it's something no one expected. From Russia, you got Exo Michikolovich Sanhusky. Yeah, I pretty much butchered that. I'll just let Exile say it for you. Exilo Mikhailovich Sandhusky. Exile is a Siberian husky who speaks in a thick Russian accent, which causes him to mispronounce phrases like April Day instead of May Day or Jingle Balls instead of Jingle Bells. While living in Siberia Tundra, he worked as a sled dog until he was called to be a road rover, and now he lives with the president of Russia, Boris Yeltsin. 
The superpower he possesses is of super strength and also heat, ice, and night vision. So basically, he's kind of like Superman, but in dog form. The fifth member of the team would be Shag, an old English sheepdog from Switzerland who tends to be a coward. Is this another stereotype? Maybe? I don't know anymore. Shag tends to be half Kano sapien, being that yes, he walks like a human, but speaks in more of a dog gibberish type of language. Probably because he didn't properly transform. The only superpower Shag possesses is the ability to store stuff in his fur, going from weapons to random objects, even food. Before he became a rover, he lived as a sheepdog, but now he lives with Arnold Kohler, the president of the Swiss Confederation. And last but not least, we have Muzzle, a Rottweiler that was once Scout, Shepard's dog of course. He wasn't transformed into a Kano Sapien, but instead he went insane because of Parvo's experimenting on him with a prototype version of the Trans Dogma Fire. Because of this, he is restrained in a cart and straitjacket, kind of like Dr. Hannibal from the Silent of the Lambs movie. The only role that he has on the team is that of being the final blow to the villains. Usually the rovers sick him upon the villains to do who knows what with them. I won't talk about the villains in the show since I don't want to spoil the main villain's true identity. But I will say that the villains tend to be a little goofy with their intentions. Like one villain wants to destroy America simply because he was court-martialed. Or an arms dealer who just wanted two nations to fight because, well, he just likes seeing war. So what are my thoughts on the show? Well, I found out about the show way back in 2017 and watched it for the first time. It turns out the show has some charm to itself. Sure, it can get weird at times with its stories and its dialogue can get a little bit strange. But I would say that the show is unique when it comes to each rover. They have a personality which makes them interesting when they interact with either themselves or other people. For some reason, the rovers tend to have this sort of charm when it comes to either making a joke or interacting through their cheesy dialogue. Even though Road Rovers has only one season with only 13 episodes, there were plenty of good episodes. But of course, there are some hiccups within the show. One of them would be that there's characters that we didn't see much screen time within each episode. Characters like Professor Hubert or Persia, who were characters within the show that were only seen in one episode and that was that. Like I said before, there was only 13 episodes in the season, but seriously, could they at least add them a little bit more instead of placing them in only one episode? It was like the writers just made these characters for a certain episode and just forgot about them afterwards. I mean, come on Warner Brothers, you created characters who were interesting and had something going for them only to vanish without a trace. Even villains like Colonel Havoc, the arms dealer, only got one episode and that was that. Of course, characters like these would probably have more screen time if the Rovers had a second season, but at least give these characters a little bit more to express themselves because I would like to know more about them. So, now to the main point of the video, why was this show cancelled? I mean, the show had potential and could have gone far, but... Instead, Warner Brothers decided to abandon the show for unknown reasons. And that's the reason why I wanted to make this video. I want to discuss the reason why the show was abandoned. So there are a couple of theories out there that explain the reason why Road Rovers was cancelled. Mostly they're from diehard fans of the show who are trying to piece together the puzzle themselves. So I will be discussing each theory the fans have come up with and I will give my own theory behind Road Rovers being cancelled. Okay, so this theory seems to be plausible due to it being backed up with some evidence. This theory came from a user on AnimeSuperhero.com by the name of Rover Wow from 2003. What was said in the blog was the name of a court case between Blumfield and the Warner Brothers Company in 1996. It turns out that a man by the name of Mr. Blumman Field was suing the Warner Brothers because it seems Road Rovers was based off of Blumfield's idea for a show he was making called Wing Puppies. So I guess Warner Brothers decided to cancel the show so they didn't have a lawsuit to deal with. Also in the blog was a link to the website about the course. 
and so I decided to take a look at the link only to find out that the website no longer existed. But thanks to the Wayback Machine, I was able to go all the way back to 2003 only to find out that it was a real court case that happened. But sadly, I wasn't able to go any further into the website because I had to sign up and pay money to see more. And being that it was on the Wayback Machine, I highly doubt the website would take my money. So, what are my thoughts on the theory? Well, it does have some evidence that seemed to explain the reason why Warner Brothers decided to cancel Road Rovers, but there are a few missing links to the theory. Like the court case. If you're searching up the court case now in 2021, you wouldn't be able to find it, and being that the website that had talked about the court case was the only source of information left, kind of makes the theory hard to believe for me at least. Also, Mr. Blumfield mentioned that he had an idea for a show called Wing Puppies, but if you search it up on the internet, there is no information talking about the show called Wing Puppies. So perhaps Mr. Blumfield never really made an attempt on the show or gave any information on Wing Puppies being a thing. So yeah, there's a lot of missing information within this theory, but it's still pretty good. Yeah. Even the furries have their own theory behind Road Rovers getting cancelled. So I will be including wikifur.com in this video cause the theory they present seems reasonable but has some flaws. One of the reasons behind Road Rovers getting cancelled was because of some adult jokes within the show. And yes, Road Rovers had adult jokes. But the real reason why the show was cancelled was because Warner Brothers couldn't make merchandise for the show. Now, this theory seems to be true because no one has ever seen Warner Brothers make merchandise of Road Rovers. I mean, when it comes to cartoons, animation studios want to cash in on the merchandise. Either that being a video game, toys, or even school backpacks to name a few. Without the support of merchandisers, you're going to have some problems getting the money to keep making the show. And because of this, Warner Brothers were probably like, screw it. If no one will support the show, we'll cancel it. But of course, there are some major problems behind this theory. In the post, it was mentioned that there was supposed to be an episode 14 that was supposed to be a Christmas special, but of course, like Wing Puppies, there is no evidence to prove that there was an episode 14. Well, besides fan creepypastas, but who cares about that? Another reason why this theory isn't true is the adult jokes. Now, I mentioned in my 101 Dalmatian Dark Secret episode that 90s cartoons were famous for adult jokes. Shows like Dexter's Laboratory, Ren and Stimpy, and even Animaniacs had plenty of dirty jokes within the show, and Road Rovers wouldn't be any different if a few dirty jokes slip in. Still though, the merchandise crisis seems to be a logical explanation. So this theory comes from a user on DeviantArt by the name of MadGerman123. In the article, MadGerman123 wrote, he talks about how cartoon violence was being changed during the 90s, and how the US government decided to change children's cartoons to be a little more educational and a lot less violent. He also had a second theory about how Disney was dominating the cartoon industry during the 90s, making a profit with their movies and TV shows. Because of this, many people tried to do the same thing Disney was doing, including Warner Brothers. But Warner Brothers had a problem with ratings, and because of that, they had to take down many of their TV shows, just so they could bring up newer ones. Now, I have no problems with both these theories, being that they both seem reasonable. In the 90s, kids tend to be watching shows that had some mature themes that shouldn't be viewed at a young age. Also, things like the rise of heavy metal music, or violent video games like Mortal Kombat and Doom were viewed in the public as violent and not suitable for their young children, who which could turn into violent adults when they got older. Stuff like the Columbine shooting terrified many parents, making them think that their children could become a criminal or a serial killer if they looked at too much violence. So, the US government decided to tone down the violence in media by introducing kids to more educational shows like Captain Planet or The Magic School Bus as examples. We could also look at Disney 
and how they basically dominated the movie industry with classics like Aladdin, Hercules, and of course, The Lion King to name a few. Not to mention Disney's 3D animation branch, Pixar, made Toy Story 1995. And because of all of this, Warner Brothers had some trouble catching up with Disney in their animation business. And because of that, Warner Brothers needed to find other ways to get ratings and money. So, the Warner Brothers decided to make experimental cartoons or give cartoons a trial run to see what kids would like to watch, and I guess Road Rovers was one of those cartoons. I know this is a lot to take in, but I would say that Mad German123 has two solid theories, and I believe he's got something going on. So, what is my theory? Well, personally, I can't really pinpoint the real reason why Road Rovers got cancelled, but while looking at the other theories, I sort of put together a version of my own, so just hear me out. I believe that Road Rovers was an experimental cartoon that Warner Brothers made in order to get feedback and see what children would like to see in their cartoons. And of course, Road Rovers got plenty of positive feedback and huge ratings on TV. But unfortunately, Warner Brothers couldn't get anyone to make merchandise for the show, and because they were fighting Disney in the animation industry, Warner Brothers had to cut corners and take shows off the air so they could save money. It's unknown what was going on with the Warner Brothers animation team during the mid-90s, but with the war going on between Warner Brothers trying to keep up with Disney and with new shows coming out to see if they could get high ratings, I guess Road Rovers was forgotten by Warner Brothers and never saw the potential Road Rovers had and ditched the whole show together. So, that's the story behind Road Rovers, a show that had full potential but sadly their creators never saw it. But does that mean it's the end of it? Well, not exactly. Even though Road Rovers had a short time on television, the Road Rovers have had a few cameos. In the episode The Steel Perch of the Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries, there's a statue of Hunter standing next to a few other statues in the background. In Rick Griffin's webcomic series, House Pets, the comic shows some respect, has a poster of Bliss on this gym wall in the background. And in episode of Hug Bees on Teen Titans Go, there is a scene where Starfire is seen holding a film tape of the Road Rovers. It seems that both Warner Brothers and the fans haven't forgotten the show being that Road Rovers became a cult following and I believe Warner Brothers have noticed their fans' feedbacks to the show. Since the episode Hug Bees was aired in 2020, I highly doubt Warner Brothers have forgotten Road Rovers. But does this mean we might get a reboot? Who knows? But if the Animaniacs were able to get rebooted in 2020, then why can't Road Rovers have a chance to make a comeback? It's unclear what the Warner Brothers Animation Studio is doing right now, but if they decide to reboot Road Rovers, that would be great. I would say that Road Rovers deserve another chance, being that it had something going for itself in the 90s, and the fact that Warner Brothers could bring back Road Rovers today. But what they need is to know that Road Rovers wasn't a mistake, and that Road Rovers need to come back for a second chance. So, if you guys are interested in watching Road Rovers, you can still watch it. In fact, Warner Brothers released a complete DVD set of the show back in 2015. You could buy a physical copy off Amazon, or you could buy it digitally on Amazon Prime Video or Apple TV. Sure, the show has its cheesy dialogue and strange moments, but in the long run, I still believe Road Rovers is a decent show to watch, and it's one of those hidden cartoons that people see as underrated. Even though Warner Brothers haven't made it unclear why they cancelled Road Rovers, I guess we'll never know the real truth.